are in the fall garden, the quote unquote fall garden, because it's not a true fall in Houston. But this is kind of like what things are looking like now. I've cleaned out everything. Um, this newest section of the garden, I've just topped that off with some soil, which I'll talk to you about in just a second. Um, this section here, I've never really planted food there. And so right now I have some cowpeas slash black eyed peas, whatever you choose to call them in that section. Not because I want to eat those, but because I need to fix the soil. So that's gonna help with like um, adding some nitrogen to that soil over there because it's really not great. Um, other than that, the garden is pretty much cleaned out. All the summer things are gone except for the okra. There's this one and there's one, actually two on the other side, but I'm letting them go because they still have flowers. And I literally just picked some okra off of there today. Um, some of the marigolds have come out and while I'm on this side let me just show you how there are only three marigolds over here and they're spaced pretty evenly apart that's that didn't happen on purpose but I like it um, I did have to pull a couple out that were struggling but so when we get to the other side you're gonna see I'm still cleaning things out and part of that clean out is to take out marigolds on this side there were so many still are there's that okra two of them but you can see they still have flowers so i'm not going to touch them um but i'm going to clean up these marigolds i'm going to take out i've already taken out one from here that was not symmetrical with the other side i'm probably going to leave i'm going to leave that one take all of these i'll probably leave that one and the one on the end um, only other thing from summer other than the okra that needs to come out is the eggplant. So I've started to harvest the rest of those and there's just one plant left. You can see it there. Um, and there you can see more marigolds that I'm taking out. Look how pretty that one is though. I think I'm going to leave that one. The pepper plants are still in and I'm going to leave those as well because there's tons of peppers over there bell peppers over there on those plants so i'm just gonna leave them alone i actually am allowing my basil to flower so they can drop more seeds and i'll continuously have basil plants and there's more marigolds on this side now what's interesting on this side i will have to cut those back especially the little yellow, yellow ones but on this side i still have some two roma tomato plants that are still doing things so I'm just gonna leave them alone. That's how I grow. Even though these things are, are supposed to happen like in a certain season, I just let things go until they don't go anymore. So that's what I'm doing with those. Um, I did come out here and throw out some seeds. I threw out most of my brassicas, um, cabbage, kale, chard, um, all across the beds, not just on this side. On this side, I think I threw in some broccoli and some cauliflower. Um, over there, mustards, turnips, cabbage, purple and green cabbage. But the problem is that there's also weeds in here. And I am working really, really hard at learning to leave things alone because I'm constantly out here wanting to weed, wanting to water. Sometimes I overwater because I'm like, I'm really like over loving my plants and my food both inside and outside that's why I can't keep anything alive inside the house because I'm constantly fussing over it so I'm working really hard now on not doing that so since I planted seeds all over there if I go over there now and try to pull weeds I'll probably be pulling up tiny tiny baby seedlings that are trying to come up as well and whatever seeds are still over there of course I would dislodge those too so I'm gonna leave it alone um, in this section, there is Swiss chard and perpetual spinach, same thing. Those are there, a couple of them are coming up, but there's a few weeds in there. So again, I'm just gonna leave it alone. When the okra finally comes out, then I can plant more there. The goal is to not be able to see any ground. So I think I'm doing really well with not touching things. So today, the only thing I'm touching are these marigold plants. I'm just going to get out here and finish cleaning those up like I said I would do. And it feels great, so it's a great day to do it. 
and then we'll see how things go from there. A quick word about dirt, soil. This is gonna save you guys a ton of money. And, you know, a little bit of time, not much, but a ton of money, that's the big thing. Listen, do not buy bags of dirt. Don't buy things like garden soil, potting soil. Don't buy these things because it's unnecessary. It's expensive, it's unnecessary. And you can make your own soil and just change it up depending on what you need it for. I've talked about this in previous videos, but it's just that important that I want to always keep reiterating this. Normally, if you were to have to fill up a new garden, a raised garden bed, it would cost you, I don't know, a lot of money at a big box store to buy enough quote unquote garden soil to grow your veg in. Let me show you what to do instead. But first, let me just give you one little caveat. So if you only have a small space, a small area to fill like this, like this was the area that I had to top off. If that's all you have, fine. Go buy um, a couple of bags of not garden soil still, but go and buy, you know, a bag of topsoil and a bag of compost if you don't have your own compost. That's what I did for this area um, because I've learned over the years that that garden soil is no better than this, especially if you can get local topsoil and local compost, that's going to work the best in your garden and then you just amend it with whatever you need to amend it with. I don't like to use fertilizer so you will never catch me buying the miracle stuff. Um, I don't like to use synthetic fertilizers. Use things like bone meal, blood meal, things that are organic and natural. Um, this, topping off just this section right here, cost me one bag of, like I said, one bag of topsoil, which is like $2 and one bag of compost so less than five dollars and i already had the bone meal i just mixed that all together and put it in here now let's say so come spring i'm gonna need to top off the entire garden all the way across right in that case i go to the dirt yard and get what they call a premium soil mix again i add in whatever additives i want bone meal, blood meal, whatever I'm going to add in. And I can get literally a truckload of soil for $20. $20. That would never happen going to the big box store and buying bags to try to fill this entire space. Now, I have tried multiple different methods of, um, of, of, of this the bagged soil combination. I've done the peat moss thing and I'm gonna tell you some people it works great for. I personally didn't like it. So I probably won't do that again. It was cost effective, yes, but I didn't like having to mix certain ratios. If you put too much peat moss, like the way it holds water, all of that stuff. I don't wanna to have to do science <laughs> when I come outside. You know, the garden is my place of zen. It is my happy place and I don't want to have to do all that work so I didn't like the peat moss thing you can try it um, it may work for you um, and basically that's just where you mix again topsoil compost and peat moss like in thirds or you play around with the ratio see what you like um, but for me simple works simpler is better and I've had no issues with it um, so that was one thing that I really, really wanted to stress. I think I stress it in pretty much every garden video I do because soil can be your biggest expense. It can be your biggest headache or you can keep it simple and, you know, you won't have to worry about it too much. Okay, back to the updates in the garden. So now this is a lot better. I'm starting over on the same side again just to show you the difference. And I have a big smile on my face. You can't see it right now, but... It's just so much better. Look how much cleaner that is. I can actually see the ground, which is fine for now, but pretty soon we will not see it. 
even had to clean up that big one even though um i said it was gonna stay it is staying but i had to clean it up a little bit and then back there i had to clean that up a little bit too so this just looks in my opinion much more tidy you may be like but it's a garden why does it need to be tidy it still needs to look really good because i've talked about this before i live in a heavily regulated hoa community um and my backyard is open to the lake so you know it's important that it still looks really good and as an interior designer i have this thing about symmetry so that has spilled over into the garden as well but i love the way this looks right now and like I said earlier, there's not really a whole lot to talk about in terms of what's planted. Um, there are things planted here. Uh, like I said earlier, pulled up marigolds from there. So I'm going to put some, something else there. Um, now I can come out here and put even more cabbage in this corner because there were eggplants here and a big marigold there. And then I pulled up from here, I pulled up... Um, one big eggplant well they're patio baby eggplants so they don't get huge but it was bushy right there and then another big marigold there so now i have decided that this is going to become my asparagus patch and you can see i already have one growing right here i couldn't see it because of the eggplant and the marigold they were hiding it um in a previous video i talked about growing up in my front yard which i had the asparagus growing up there and then i realized that I didn't like it there because I didn't know how big the plants actually get. Like this is pretty and petite right now, but they get pretty big. As a matter of fact, the ones up front were probably about so high and you could see them up over the bushes and they were just like these fronds that were just waving in the wind and I hated it. So I think I'm going to like it back here though, because it'll be again, like a living fence. Like when I had the lupa back here. So those will be nice and feathery and pretty. And I think I can get maybe six along here and that'll be my asparagus patch. We'll have asparagus for days, you guys. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to some of these seeds. I'm looking forward to my greens and my brassicas coming up and eating all this great fall food the greens i love i love i love so that's pretty much it for today we just have to keep watching things like i said and hopefully we'll get some great living water today because i firmly believe that the water that comes out of our faucets it's just, I mean, it's fine. We need to water out of our faucets and our sprinklers, but you know, we really need that living water. So when it rains, I just, I love that. I want the soil and the plants to soak up all of God's goodness. And I'm hoping and praying, it's in the forecast, but I'm hoping and praying that it actually happens, that we get some of that living water and that helps my seeds to actually germinate and grow and flourish. So, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, <laughs> and that's pretty much it from the garden today, you guys. Thank you for joining me yet again, and I hope you come back and follow along this journey. Till next time, you guys. Bye.